I could never fall off. Jesus Christ in the death. Yeah, yeah. Want me throw up a prayer? Throw it, throw it. Then I gotta go get it. Get it. Get it. Ain't no such thing as quitting. Dodge the bull like I'm pippin'. Boy, I'm back in my bag. Why you thought that I left? I could never fall off. Never, never. Jesus Christ in the death. Chill, chill. Want me throw up a prayer? Throw it, throw it. Then I gotta go get it. Hi, I'm uh, Peter O'Kane. I'm here with my wife, Marge, and we helped to run the Randolph Oilers for 41 years. Well, I've always lived in Randolph, and when I grew up, I lived right across from the high school field, and that's where the town team played. So I was used to, you know, seeing this level of football, and in the 30s and 40s, my father played, and then I played in the 50s and 60s. For a short time, there wasn't a team in Randolph, but we had a group of players that uh, played in the uh, Boston Park League. The, uh, the the club was actually called the Delaney Club after John Delaney. Uh, he owned Columbia Pontiac, and then they 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 knew about this league, the Eastern Football League, that we joined, and they wanted to join. So they asked a fellow down North Randolph, Eddie Whip, who helped start Pop Warner football. And some of the players knew that I had been involved. So they asked if, you know, if we'd get involved. And we, uh, had to go around always to our first meeting, you know, and we, you have to give a presentation about why you thought a team might be successful in Randolph. So, Fortunately, we were accepted at that time, and I always thought it was a big honor to be part of the Eastern Football League. That was in uh, 74. The league started in 61, and for a while it was the oldest continuous football league in the country. And um, it was it was a great experience, some wonderful people involved. You know, some good teams, some great, you know, players. It was a very, it was like a family, and I hope now it's going to be the same way for, you know, uh, Jug and whoever else is involved, and Delaney and Vaughn Driscoll. <laughs> I can't name that whole coaching staff, but they're getting off to a great start. We got players, um, a good a good part of the team, the original team, came from that Delaney Club. They were and most of them were from Randolph. And then the other ways, um, you know, players would bring players and then uh in those days you depended a lot on the newspapers. We depended on the regional papers, the Brockton Enterprise and the Quincy Ledger. They gave us good support and I would never say, oh, this guy was the best or that guy, but um, players that played for quite a while had a long, a long history with the team. Jay McGee was one. He's the all-time lead in Russia in the Eastern Football League. He came from Brockton, and two years he led the state in score, and he went to the University of Hawaii, and he was a great player and a great teammate. Uh, Michael White, at the same time, he was from Weymouth. He went to Curry. He led that division. He led the country in scoring. So that was a great combination for us to, you know, start with Michael White and Jay McGee. Um, we had a player, Lance Oberding. He was the first player from the Eastern Football League to actually get drafted. He got drafted by the Cincinnati, Cincinnati uh, Royals. Then he played some with the Patriots and he played with Buffalo. Oh, yeah, he was an oiler. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny because he didn't play in college. That was, you know, it, it, it's very unusual to get drafted. When you have them played in college, yeah, we were lucky, and you know, for a lot of people, uh, now I'm older, but when we started, we had a lot of older fans, you know, people that uh, came to the games, and they would come with their kids, their grandkids, uh, a lot of families came, and uh, so we had a, we had some very good support. I can't say enough for the volunteers we had through the years. 
people, so Marge and I were there with every game, but we had other people who were, who did the same. Eddie Cornley selling tickets and uh, Marge, Marge's two sisters, Laurie and uh, Jenny, they helped in the refreshment stand. We, people, I don't know, they wanted to help. Um, the press box was... <laughs> It was hard to get in the press box. I felt bad for, you know, the people that were trying to announce the game and uh, had to do, but they did a great job. I'm looking forward to seeing the games. I'll have my cane, but I'm going to stand. <laughs> I'll stand right on the sidelines. I like to stand on the sidelines and watch the game. I pretend I can know what's going on, but watch the blocking and all that stuff. But I, I wish nothing but the best for, you know, all you guys that are involved. In. You ever hear a new player that comes to the Celtics, he comes to the Garden, and he says, man, the banners, the championship, the history, it, it's, it's, it's crazy. That's the feeling we got when we sat down with Peter O'Kane. We learned so much about the history and the pride that the town of Randolph has for the Oilers. We were honored that he gave us his blessings for bringing the team back. We're going to need all the blessings we can get because we're holding our first team meeting tomorrow and we're hoping we have a good turnout. Of course, I'm, my name is Doug. You know, I'm the GM of the team. That's Delaney Roberts. He's the owner of the team. And we have a couple of coaches around. As you all know, we're bringing back the Randolph Oilers storied semi-pro team. Uh, some of you already played for the Oilers. Um, we have an opportunity to bring the team back, uh, make a lot of noise. The community's behind us already. We've been campaigning and working with and through Randolph for, for months now. So, you know, everybody's all in on this. Uh, what we basically need is uh, you guys, players. That's why we're holding these meetings and doing all this stuff when the word out trying to recruit uh, so we can get a team going here. We're going to be in the ECFL. We're going to be playing in the double A, as you guys, some of you already know. Um, I don't know. Some of you guys, I don't know. I don't know if you guys played before in the ECFL. Any teams you guys might have played for. I know some of you guys, but... Um, it's the, the double A this year is going to be pretty competitive. They have Brockton, Marshfield, um, Haverhill, who, who won the, you know, the, the national championship, which is questionable to me, but, you know, it's whatever. Um, so, you know, it's going to be a, a competitive uh, conference. So we just want to make sure that we're competitive right off rip. So we've just been recruiting heavy. Uh, it takes us plus players to help recruit, and so that's what we're trying to build here. Um, well, we're trying to work out some situations with the fields right now. Um, Randolph High, the field's kind of messed up, so they don't want to risk injury. So we're trying to hopefully see if that gets fixed before the season starts, so that can be our home field because that would be a big deal. Um, if y'all don't know about Randolph, they come out, and they used to play games on Friday, and I, I've been talking to people in, in, in Randolph, and it was like the thing that people used to wait for that on the weekends to come, come see the Oilers play. So this is this is a big deal uh, right off rip. So, yeah, so, yeah, so that will probably be the practice day. It'll be Wednesday, and it'll be from 7 to 9 or from 8 to 10, so that make sure everybody gets there. Games will be on either Friday or Saturday, depending on the schedule. Um, same time as most games, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. Um, and that's basically it for that as far as the scheduling. Um, we're, we're looking to start practice maybe the first week of April. Um, there'll be a post on the Facebook page, on the player page. Most of our communication is done on Facebook through the player page. So if you don't have it, for whatever reason, just get it just for that if you're going to be playing on this team because that's how you're going to get all the information. on the Like everything you need to know will be on the page. So there won't be a reason to have to call or ask anything. It, it will be posted on the page. So we have an opportunity to, you know, do our thing. And I think it would be great to come in, bring the new Randolph Oilers and get right to the title. Oh. Our colors are the Oregon Ducks from the past couple of years. Yeah, I think the helmet's here. That's the, the, the helmet. Yeah, it's right there. Those are the colors. Yeah. yeah. The helmet's going to be black, though, correct? No, it's going to be white. It's going to be white. Yeah, okay. yeah. Give me These white. are the colors. Um, 
we're going to have some mock-ups of the uniforms and put them on the, on the board. It's going to look nice. We're probably going to be the freshest team out there. Um, so the home and away will be the green. We, we might have like an all of this, this lime green here, color with that, a black one, maybe a white. It might be three unis, so it's going to, it might, it's going to look fire. So. And that's so, it. Hey, thank you for coming today. Please stick around and ask any questions ask you questions. want. Never. That's Let's it. keep your commitment, unity, and hard nose play. Right now we're here checking out the field to see the conditions, if we can play on it or not. We spoke to the city earlier uh, a few months ago, and they were saying that the conditions were bad on the field, so we might not be able to use the field this season. So we just wanted to come take a look ourselves and see what it's looking like. Welcome to the home of the new Randolph Oilers. Concerned of some of these tippets here, some of these things here. Oh. I think there's some more over here. And we got this spot here, maybe this thing here, which I don't really think. Uh, I, I mean, I've played on worse fields, so uh, we're just gonna hope that maybe the school. You know, can kind of reconsider uh, not allowing us to play on this field. You know, I understand like it could be a liability and stuff, but um, uh, I mean, I've seen teams come out here and practice and do all types of other stuff. So uh, we'll just we'll go back to the table with them and see if we can talk about this and see if we can keep uh, Randolph as a home field because it'll be, it'll be really bad for us to um, you know to be bringing the team back and then have to play in another city or another town we really would want to you know bring it right back to Randolph so um, we got some things to talk about so we'll see how that works out unfortunately things didn't work out with the field in Randolph but 10 minutes down the road it's a nice town called Holbrook, Mass. They were more than happy to let the Oilers have the high school as their new home field. New team, first practice. We're not expecting a lot of numbers, but we are happy to see these guys coming in. Everyone knows that 90% of the job at this level is getting people to show up. Everyone also knows at this level, even if you have five or 10 guys show up, you still put in work. This is offensive coordinator A.J. Grant. He once led the offense to one of the most storied franchises in semi-pro history to a championship game. Now he's trying to do it here with the Oilers. This is defensive coordinator Daryl Sano Jones. This is Sano's first career coaching job. But Sano has always been a coach on the field as a player. We felt like it was only right for him to take this position. Come this side, you got him. Yep. Same thing on this side. Same thing on this side. Well, actually, no, no, not on this side because we're. 
We're, co we're still we're cover three. Cover three. We'll if, 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 we, if we go cover one, we go man to man. We go man to man. Now you have to read. So, but if we're blitzing, we can stay. We can stay in the cover three. We just have to cover more ground. So let's send that blitz for the cover three in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's all three. Oh, it's all three. One, two, three. Oh, hey, yo, so now y'all better get, y'all better step up with your voice, because I'm just going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to Yes, sir. Oh, 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 oh. Outside, inside, outside. Oh, hey. Go to sleep. Oh, 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 if he lines up inside, if he lines up down while you're running, he's about to be over the way. Jab Marky, good job, Marky! Jab Marky, In motion, go ahead. Set, to snap it, and stop. Set, go. So now when you do that, I'm the backer, I'm looking right at him. Even if it's for half a second, he's already wide open. Like we all know, it. this is the first. I mean, for for the first practice that we've had, we got these types of numbers with these types of guys working the way they did. Where this is a, it's a climb, but at the end of the day, this is a good thing. You know, I've seen uh, practices at the beginning of the season of teams that have been in business for a very long time here. Hey, we're here at that Homer High School. It's our first practice. Randolph Oil is. Uh, we got about 20 guys out here working hard. Um, first practice is always, you know, people come in at their own leisure. Um, we are expected more guys next week. We knew about 15 other guys that were supposed to be here, but due to working situations, they couldn't make it. But the guys that are here get some hard work in. We got some good talent, some young talent mixed with some veterans. And uh, the coaches are really optimistic on this season. So stay tuned. Watch us every week because we're going to bring to you the Randolph Oilers championship team from 1990. Thank you. Commitment, unity, hard nose play will take us all the way. I'm back in my pad. Oh, you thought that I left? I could never fall off. Jesus Christ in a day.